Yo, people, then we out here with the MSI Crosshair 16 Gaming Laptop two months later. Now, just a little disclaimer, MSI have passed me this laptop for free just for review and little content creation purposes. But after I'm done with all that, it goes straight back to MSI. So my opinions are my own. Let's get into this. Now, starting off with the design, it's very MSI. Obviously, you've got a little MSI badge there in the middle. You've got the little, I don't know, that's like a little crosshair situation thing going on the top cover right there. And just in case you busybodies actually want to know what the bottom of the laptop looks like, this is what it looks like as well. It looks like we've got little ventilation all over the place. Kind of like the way the see-through thing is going on there, where you can literally see the copper heat pipes doing their thing there but um yeah man that's the thing right there isn't it now starting off with ports on the left hand side you got 3.2 gen 2 usb c and the usb a port there as well obviously this thing has got display port capabilities as well no thunderbolt though on the back of the thing now we got usb 3.2 gen 2 we got hdmi 2.1 we got Evernet things and we got the little barrel port for plugging it into power. Now on the other side, obviously we've got the 3.5 millimeter combination microphone and headphone jack and we've got another 3.2 Gen 2 port, USB-A flavor. Now you guys probably already know this by now, but MSI laptops always pass the one finger opening test. This thing is firmly planted on the floor as man opens it up with one finger. It's looking nice fam, especially this RGB keyboard. We're gonna get into that in a second now starting off with the specs msi are not playing around here fam we got that intel core i7 14700 hx 16 gigabytes of ram but you can get up to 32 gigabytes of ram in this model got a terabyte of ssd pcie 4.0 flavor wi-fi 6e on board obviously so not the fastest but my router only goes up to wi-fi 6e anyway so that's more than enough for what i can handle at the moment you got Intel UHD graphics in there. Would have loved to see Arc graphics, but you know, it is what it is. And in this one, we got a very capable NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 GPU powering all the gameplay and all that kind of thing there. Now for the display, MSI are definitely cooking because we got the 16 inch IPS thing, 2K resolution, and it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So that's 2560 by 1600 a little bit taller than your normal laptop screens that are usually 16 by 9 and we've got up to 240 hertz refresh rate there fam so 2k 240 hertz that's what most up-to-date high spec gaming monitors are dealing with these days so that's wicked to have that kind of spec on a laptop screen now, just like with all other MSI laptops, you obviously get the MSI Center application. And I can't lie, it's got bare different features, but I literally use two of them. The one is the, what's it called, user scenario thing, where basically you've got the MUX switch there. So you can tell the computer if you always wanted to use the NVIDIA RTX 4060 for everything it does, making sure that everything you do do is max powered but that's obviously going to kill out the battery and you can put it on integrated graphics if you're not feeling to do a madness on whatever your workload is and you also got the mystic light which i'm about to go into right now and now people man just dim the lights just a little piece so you guys can see the keyboard a little piece better um and just to also show you the different kind of lighting patterns that they've got in the msi center software so you've got this wheel one which kind of I guess has everything going around the wheel. You got the bouncy ball one. Okay, that's that's something that's a little piece different as well. You got the wave, wavy, steady. You got the breathing one where it's gonna breathe on and off kind of thing. So you know it flashes on and it flashes all the way off. Um, you got the color cycle as well where it's just gonna go through all the different colors, um, and you can customize it as well and do a madness. It's obviously per key RGB, so every key you can have as a different color if that's what really floats your boat kind of thing, isn't it? So yeah, no, no, wavy, wavy little, little things that they got going on there with the RGB key lighting. On to gameplay performance. Now, in terms of the NVIDIA drivers, man's updated them as of the 23rd of October, 2024. So whatever driver NVIDIA released back then is what man's using for these testing and benchmark results. So keep that in mind if you're watching this, you know, in a couple months time. Furthermore, just before I go into the performance and gameplay, can I just say that NVIDIA RTX 4060 
is not playing around. It's not like the RTX 3060 before that or the 2060 or the GTX 1060. I think I don't even think it was called a GTX back then because the 60 was like the lower range card. But the lower range card now in 2024, this thing can push elegant frames at 2K resolution and high gameplay settings. Starting off with Grid Autosport, obviously it's a very well optimized game but you can see how well the game is running and that frame rate is staying locked. Moving over to what I still think is the best looking game to ever grace the PS5 system, we got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. And as you can see, we got 2K resolution, we got the Nvidia DLSS on, we got it on um, beautiful mode or whatever the mode is called where it just kind of looks nice. And we've got it running at what, 60 plus frames per second, very high settings kind of thing, running around in this big open world area. I think this is one of the most demanding levels on the game because obviously it's very open plan, roam around, do whatever you want. Whereas obviously traditionally Ratchet and Clank games are very linear and you stick to the path. This, you can literally go anywhere. So the game literally has to load in everything that you run into and the nvidia rtx 4060 even at 2k resolution and very high gameplay visual settings it's just mashing it up fam. it's not sweating at all fam. you can see by the settings in the top left corner next up is ghost of tsushima fam this game is a masterpiece it does look really good i still think ratchet and clank rift apart looks better but again, fam, we're talking 2K resolution, NVIDIA DLSS on, we've got the beauty mode on or whatever that mode is called again. And we're looking at high settings from everything high kind of thing. I feel there's one more stage above that. But at this stage, we're getting a nice fluid above 60 frames per second kind of thing, which if you lock in the V-Sync, you can lock that to 60. And look how smooth the game is moving, cause looks like a cinematic masterpiece. The game is a cinematic masterpiece anyway, but again, the NVIDIA RTX 4060 at 2K resolution is no slouch. This is child's place for that NVIDIA RTX 4060. Next up, still on the PlayStation bandwagon, we got that Horizon Forbidden West fam. This game looks crazy sexy fam. Flip, you know, 2K resolution again, nvidia dlssss whatever the thing is called we got it on high settings fam so we're still not playing around still looks better than what it would look like on the ps5 and just look at the frame rate you're about to see here fam everything above 60 frames per second we're not playing around because we're not we're not playing around fam. we're playing this proper again the nvidia rtx 4060 you already know the vibes i don't need to speak fam this game looks sick and it's getting played easy on this thing now obviously to see what the frame rate and response times of the screen is saying we had to get a little cs go going on i've got it on high settings i think i've got it maxed out to be honest just to see what frame rate i'm getting and it's saying around the 70 to 80 mark still above 60 but obviously if you're professional you're gonna put them settings on low and you're gonna get the maximum frame rate that you can get possible on a game like this where you need them zero second reactions response time feels pretty good obviously again i'm not an esports warrior so i won't know but i feel like when i clicked a button on my mouse i instantly saw the action happening on the screen fam so yeah man definitely competition rating now i can't actually remember when god of war came to pc was it in 2017 or was that when it came to ps5 anyway regardless of when it came to pc we're doing this maxed out at 2K resolution and we're getting a strong 60 frames per second plus. I'm telling you, man, this NVIDIA RTX 2060 is no slouch at all. Definitely capable of doing whatever you need to do on a 2K display. If you're going to 4K, however, that's when you're going to probably want to turn down some of those in-game graphical settings. But as you can see right now, even a little, a little spritz up to 70 frames per second, this thing has no issues. I want to give you guys a little sound test as well so you can kind of hear how loud the speakers sound over the sounds that the fans are making when this thing is obviously at full load playing games. I 
can't lie, regardless of what I throw at this thing, people, that combination of the i7 14th gen with the NVIDIA RTX 4060 is basically killing anything I've got to play at 2K resolution, high graphical settings. The only thing I would have loved is maybe a Thunderbolt 4 cable or maybe a couple extra USB-C ports. But what I'm getting here for the price, I'm definitely not mad at. And it might sound weird to say this, but I feel like the NVIDIA RTX 4060 has ruined the rest of NVIDIA's graphics card lineup for me because if I'm getting such good performance on this NVIDIA RTX 4060, why would I need the 4070, 4080 or the 4090 fam? The 4060 is clearly able to do whatever I need it to do at 2K resolution, 60 frames per second plus high settings, yeah? If you're just a gamer and you want good graphics, you're pretty set with the RTX 4060. I'm, I'm not sure why you need more performance than that. Maybe if you're doing a bit of graphical editing or a bit more graphical work, yeah, the 4070 or the 4080, 4090 might make sense. But if you're just gaming, you're just on this thing, yeah? 4060, say no more.